Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Destruction Warlock. Destruction Warlock was the go-to meta spec for most of BFA, so I'm not surprised to see it receive uh, very few changes. However, the changes that it did receive make it significantly better in areas that previously Destro Lock was very weak in, uh, most specifically in AoE. If you enjoyed the videos I've made so far for the Shadowlands class previews, then consider supporting me. Um, and the best way to do that is through my Patreon. You can find the link to it in the description box. Anyone who supports me will receive some cool perks that you can find on my Patreon page. With that out of the way, let's talk about Destro Lock. So for baseline changes, there's not that many. First of all, the big nerf to how long it takes us to summon a pet also afflicts Destro Lock. So it takes six seconds to summon a new pet. To compensate for this, Blizzard added an ability called Fell Domination that makes your pet summon very quick, but it is on a three minute cooldown. This is mostly a PVP nerf. However, in specific PVE situations, it might be pretty annoying to have to resummon your pet. Um, other changes, we also got Curse of Tongues, Curse of Weakness, and Curse of Exhaustion. Those three are just a little flavor added back to the spec. Another change is that Demonic Circle is now baseline instead of a talent, which means that we have a new talent row or a new talent slot that gets freed up um, that I will talk about a little bit later. They also added Corruption back to Destro Lock. I honestly don't think this is going to be absolutely any use to the spec. Um, so far, I don't think people use it at all and it doesn't fit into the playstyle whatsoever. So I honestly don't think it will see much use unless it ends up being overtuned. And then the last ability that was added is Ritual of Doom. And at this point, I'm fairly convinced that this is straight up trolling. Um, it summons a Doom Guard that you can control, but it kills someone in the process. It has a one hour cooldown. I don't think this should be in the game at all. Um, it's either going to be useless or it's going to be overtuned. And then for Mythic Rating specifically, having a one hour cooldown makes absolutely no sense. Now let's take a look at the talents because this is where we had a few tweaks. So in the first tier, Soul Fire has been changed to also apply Immolate and it generates a Soul Shard. So it's essentially an empowered Immolate that you cast every 45 seconds. Currently, I think Flashover is just too strong. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll see Soul Fire, Soul Fire being used too much. Then in the second tier, Shadow Burn has been changed um, to now have two charges instead of one charge. It's on a 12 second uh, recharge time, deals 50% increased crit damage to targets below 20% health. And if the target dies within five seconds of you applying Shadow Burn, you gain a Soul Shard back. So you essentially cast it for free. So it might be all right for like sniping um, executes, but in general, not sure how strong this ability is going to be. Then in the level 35 row, Inferno has been buffed slightly to also increase our Reign of Fire damage by 20%. And then the probably the most significant change has been to Fire and Brimstone. So they doubled the amount of shards that you get and your Incinerate cleaves all enemies around your main target. This means that in Mythic Plus and AoE, you will be generating a ton of extra shards. So overall, this talent makes a huge change to how Destro Lock plays AoE situations. Then in the next tier, Howl of Terror um, replaces our Demonic Circle. It's just a 40 second AoE fear capped at five targets. Then in the level 45 row, we get a new talent instead of Grimoire of Supremacy, and that is Reign of Chaos. So Reign of Chaos, uh, is a passive effect. While your initial Infernal is active, every Soul Shard you spend has a 20% chance to summon an additional Infernal that lasts 10 seconds. This is one of the puzzle pieces that makes Destruction Warlock so strong on AoE currently. Reign of Chaos, combined with Fire and Brimstone, combined with a Legendary and a Conduit that I will talk about a little bit later, makes it so on AoE you're essentially just spamming Incinerates and then Reign of Fires as you have Soul Shards and you're just proccing extra Infernals constantly. Um, and Infernals will deal a lot of damage on AoE. So this talent, uh, in combination with the Fire and Brimstone change, makes Destro absolute powerhouse on huge AoE pools, where you're able to generate a lot of shards and spam out a bunch of Reign of Fires. 
Next, let's look at the legendaries. And for destruction in particular, I think this class has some of the strongest legendaries that I've seen so far. First of all, we have Wilfred's Sigil of Superior. Every soul shard you spend reduces the cooldown of your summon infernal by two seconds. So this combined with Fire and Brimstone for Mythic Plus makes it so your infernal ends up being a fairly low cooldown and you can spam it out way more often. It's also pretty decent on single target. However, on single target, you're generating less soul shards overall, so you're not getting as much CDR as on AoE, but that kind of makes sense. Next, we have Shawl of the Yar. Alright, whatever. Enemies marked by your Havoc take 15% increased damage from your single target spells. Super strong. Any two target cleave, which is something that Destruction Warlock already excels at because of Havoc, where you can just constantly Havoc whenever it's off cooldown and just spam out Chaos Bolts during that 12 second window. This makes it so you're even better in those situations. It's a niche legendary, but in the situations that you would use it, it is extremely powerful. Then we have Cinders of the Aj Akir. Uh, Conflag has a one additional charge and its recharge time is reduced by three seconds. So especially in combination with Flashover, this just means that you will be conflagging way more often, which means that you have backdraft way more often. So it just speeds up a little bit how um, Destruction Warlock plays. Then we have Embers of the Diabolic Raiment. Incinerate now generates 100% additional Soul Shard Fragments. Um, this is just going to give you more resources overall. And again, it just has some nice synergy with some of the talents that we have. So overall, I think Destruction has some of the strongest legendaries. It has very niche legendaries that are good for specific situations. And that's what you want out of legendaries. You don't want them to just passively increase the damage of one of your abilities. You want them to be good in a specific scenario. You want a legendary that's good on single target, one that's good on AoE, one that's good on like occasional cleave. So I believe that Destruction Warlock has those options and we'll have to wait to see how tuning turns out, but currently it's looking very promising. Next for Covenants. So for Kyrian, we have Scouring Tithe. And it works the same way as it does for Affliction. I talk about how each of these abilities work in my Affliction video, so if you want to check it out. In this video, I'm just going to talk about how they actually interact with our toolkit. The Kyrian Covenant could be really strong, especially for Mythic Plus, where you could snipe those five extra soul shards whenever something uh, dies while you have the Scouring Tithe debuff on them. So that just allows you to spam out even more Reign of Fires during your Infernal, making it that much stronger. Um, I think the downside of it is a little bit too punishing currently, just because on single target, keeping the buff up or the dot up constantly it does not net you all that damage. Um, so unless they buff this a little bit, I'm not sure if we're going to use it. Then for Necrolord, we have Decimating Bolt. Works the same way as for Affliction, however, it buffs your Incinerates. So currently for raiding, this is like the go-to just because its value increases with as the boss's health decreases. So the further you go in a boss fight, the more valuable Decimating Bolt becomes. Um, and that design is just great for mythic raiding currently. Then for Knife Fae, we have Soul Rot. Unfortunately for Destruction, this looks pretty weak. Um, maybe it has some potential in PvP, but... We don't really have that much interaction with Drain Life. We still have the Drain Life Legendary available for use, but we have nothing else in our kit that interacts with Drain Life. So I'm sad to see this be so underwhelming for Destruction. Then for Venthyr, we have Impending Catastrophe. Again, it's a Fire and Forget ability that does some damage. Um, and it also applies either Curse of Tongues or Curse of Weakness. So while it might be good to like mitigate some of the damage that an AoE pack does to your tank or to your group by causing them to attack less or cast slower, um, I honestly don't like abilities like this that you simply just press, they deal some damage, and they have no other interaction with their toolkit. So even if it ends up being the go-to Mythic Plus talent, um, I really wish that they made it a little bit more interactive with the toolkit. Next up for Conduits, and Destruction has some pretty strong ones. So first up we have Ashen Remains. 
He has both an incinerate damage on targets with immolate increased by 5%. This is particularly strong on single target where you will be keeping up immolate 100% of the time. So essentially your big spenders and your builder for that matter just deals more damage. So not too interesting but pretty strong. Then we have Duplicitous Havoc. Havoc transfers 10% more damage. This, especially when paired with the Havoc Legendary, um, could be quite powerful in situations where using it off cooldown. Then we have Combusting Engine. Conflag increases your remaining Immolate damage by 15% until Immolate expires or is refreshed. Um, overall, pretty boring, but if they tune it correctly and your Immolate actually does a decent amount of damage, it might be okay. And then for the cherry on the cake, we have Infernal Brand. Your Infernal's melee attacks cause this target to take 10% increased damage from its immolation, stacking up to 15 times. So the nice thing about this, for single target, it's alright. It's not going to be anything mind-blowing. But on AoE and in Mythic Plus, where you're spamming out Reign of Fires and you're proccing a bunch of Infernals, and you might have, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8 Infernals up at the same time, Stacking this debuff up on the targets, on all the targets, and then having that many Infernals out makes it so your Infernal will deal an absolute tremendous amount of damage on those big AoE pools where you pop it. So while on single target this conduit might be a little bit un underwhelming, for AoE it is extremely powerful. So how does Destro Warlock actually play? Well the good news is that on single target, Blizzard took the if it's not broken don't fix it approach, and I'm fine with that. Single target Destruction Warlock has played fine in my opinion. I like the playstyle, you build up shards and you have a huge burst window with Dark Soul and Infernal, um, spamming out huge Chaos Bolts. It's still a powerhouse in two target cleave where you're able to get Havoc out and then you know spam out Chaos Bolts. So they didn't change anything about those aspects of Warlock, which I'm completely fine with because those were the parts and the aspects of the game that Warlock absolutely dominated in. Single target, two target cleave, uh, especially spread cleave where melee were at a disadvantage. But the approach that Blizzard took to fixing the AoE issues of this spec, um, I like a lot. Think about the last time you press Reign of Fire as a Destruction Warlock in BFA. Um, the answer is probably almost never, and if you did, you had to have a ton of extra targets to make it worth your time. Now Reign of Fire actually feels like an ability that you should be pressing on AoE, and they added talents that interact greatly with this toolkit. So the build that I was talking about earlier, for example, the build with Fire and Brimstone, Reign of Chaos, the CDR Legendary, so whenever you spend Soul Shards, your Infernal cooldown is reduced, on top of the Infernal Conduit, all paired together to make for an extremely satisfying uh, Mythic Plus build, an AoE build, that Destruction just didn't have in the past. So I'm really looking forward to how this spec is going to play in Shadowlands, and I'm very excited to actually play it. Um, unfortunately, for single target, it does seem to be a little bit undertuned as Affliction is the current meta or go-to spec for raiding. However, Destruction can have its moments and there's definitely going to be situations where it's going to prove extremely powerful. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about Destruction Warlock? Are you fine with Blizzard essentially not changing our single target playstyle at all and instead just focusing on its weakness um, and improving how it plays on AoE? Or would you rather have seen some changes to single target as well? Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.